All right, do you need a business plan to make a million dollars? People ask me all the time, uh, you know, do you have to write out this big, thick business plan if you wanna do something big? So instead of my opinion, I'm gonna give you this William Solomon. This is a book from Harvard. Uh, he's a famous professor there called How to Write a Great Business Plan. Now, I will have to say that most of the ideas that people pitch to me, I'm an investor, are usually not good business ideas. In fact, there's one that I coined called the strawberry juice idea. One of my friends, I won't say who it is, uh, he had an idea for me that he was always trying to pitch. It, it's not the worst idea. From a one to 10 of a business plan idea, I would give it like a six. And his idea, his idea was to import strawberry juice to America. The reason that it became, went from being a six down to like a two is because he talked about it over and over for many years. Uh, so it could make a million dollars and a lot of people, uh, you know, like I said, the original question, do you need a business plan to make a million dollars? And I think the answer is this. It starts like this. Every million dollar business, billion dollar business starts with a little seed of an idea. So ideas first, but an idea is not enough. Lots of people have ideas. In fact, this book says, don't be arrogant. The odds of you having a unique idea in a world of 7.3 billion people, it's very rare. So you go from idea to what I call strategy. That is, a, is like an idea on steroids. So the other word for strategy, the conventional word, is a plan. So what are the components of a good plan? Has anybody here ever tried to write a business plan? This, by the way, is my office here. One of, my, one of the offices, I made everybody listen in. So not only you're getting this info, but everybody who works for me, hopefully they're learning stuff too. So here's what, did nobody say? Herman, you've had a business plan. Okay, Herman's had a business plan. Zach? Zach's actually writing a movie. So a movie, you write out the script, you write the whole thing, that's somewhat like a plan. So here's the components, and this is actually interesting, Zach, you would like this book. Note number one, a good business plan should seem like a movie, meaning, it's a projection into the future that includes all the conflict. So a good movie has, I just saw Jurassic World. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the world's greatest movie, but it has the elements of the initial idea. There's gonna be dinosaurs on an island. Then it has like this little side story of the family and all that. And then it progresses into the conflict. What they thought was gonna happen, everything was gonna go great. The dinosaur gets out. I'm trying to, I hope it's in a spoiler alert and you go through the movie. That's how your business plan should be. Most people write a business plan and it's just like, here's my idea. Uh, Ollie G did this once. If you see it, there's a good Ollie G where he talks to Donald Trump. It's a funny show, but he basically goes in and he projects. He says, I have an idea for an ice cream glove. And he goes, this is how much money it's gonna make. I Googled the amount of people on the planet who have hands and the amount of people who like ice cream and I multiplied them together and that's how much and then times ten dollars that's how much money I'm gonna make and the number was like two trillion dollars and that's the element of a very bad business plan because that's not how a movie goes a movie is good bad conflict how you resolve the conflict so your business plan needs to include all of those things not just the best case scenario you wouldn't want to if you went into saw Jurassic World and you sat down and the movies like they made a park with dinosaurs, then you, the whole movie, everything goes great. No one would pay for that movie because it's fake. You have to be real. So that's number one. The, uh, the number two thing is that a good business plan comprises four main elements. You have to always have it. And by the way, you know, we already have a business. So you guys are working in some of my businesses. Every time we come up with a new idea, you should also make a plan. So a plan isn't always just for a brand new thing. It can be, they call those intercompany plans, not just you know a, a brand new from scratch business. So here's the four elements that your plan should have. He says this on page, by the way, these are little teeny books. They're 40, uh, 60 pages of little pages here that Harvard puts out. And so you have no excuse not to be able to read one of these a day. And there's about 30 of them. Harvard actually sends them to me. They sent me a whole stack because I, I sell a lot of them for them. So the four things that you must have in your business plan, the people, okay? Now, this is the most important part of the business plan. 
And here's what you should address. So let's say it's you, like Herman, strawberry juice idea, okay? I'm not saying it was his idea, I'm just saying theoretically, let's say it was Herman's Argentinian strawberry juice idea. Uh, so number one, he's gotta describe the team. So him and the other people who are gonna do it with him. What do they know? So what does Herman know about strawberry juice? Okay, number two, who do they know? Like the old saying, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So Herman knows, hopefully, some good strawberry juice connections. Number three, how well are you known? Is Herman already a player in the juice world? So you gotta answer those three questions. That's number one, okay, about people. And the number two thing uh, is the opportunity. So the opportunity is basically what's in Herman's control. So he goes, strawberry juice, the opportunities. There's a billion dollar industry, people drinking juice. I'm gonna market it, da da da. That's all about the opportunity. Most business plans just have the opportunity. The next thing, the third thing is the context, which are the things outside of Herman's control. Like the regulations on importing juice. You need to address those because those are real things. And if you write a naive plan, like, oh, I can just import strawberry juice from Argentina, it's not realistic. It's a bad movie. Uh, and then the fourth thing, is the risk and reward. And you should always lay out, you know, he says only a fool thinks they have something that has no risk to it. Okay, you always have risks. This is a direct quote. Among the many sins committed by business plan writers is arrogance. In today's economy, few ideas are truly proprietary. So that means for Herman to think that he's the first person that's thought of strawberry juice is very low odds. What's probably happened is somebody's tried to import strawberry juice and fallen on their face and gone bankrupt. So if Herman's arrogant, he won't look into why it failed in the past. If you think you're the first one who had the idea for Instagram or a movie or Snapchat or whatever, probably before you know Kevin Systrom started Instagram, there was four other people trying it. You must be humble enough to go, why did other people uh, why were other people not able to pull it off, okay? So remember that, make a plan and stick to a plan, but make a good plan. It's not just an idea, it's a strategy. He says that a good business plan does not need to be this thick. In fact, he says a good business plan should be a very, very thin sheet, a uh, handful of papers, okay? You can always expand it later. So uh, I hope whatever venture you're trying to do, trying to make a lot of money, million dollars, billion dollars, or maybe even just hundred thousand dollars a year to be financially independent uh, that you will do it uh, humbly you'll think through all the characteristics and it'll be a well laid out movie including all the good the bad and how you'll react to the bad to solve it okay so that's today's book of the day check it out on uh, Amazon you can buy this book or go direct to Harvard Business uh, Review so question for you what is your current idea and write a comment below a few little points that you can elaborate on your idea. You don't have to give it all in the comments here, but leave a little comment on a, a, an additional strategy that you can add to start rounding out your basic idea, okay? Everybody got it? Questions real quick. Anybody have a question on strawberry juice? Anybody have a comment on business idea that you tried, didn't work? Come on. <laughs> No. Tell us about a business idea. Strawberry juice, Herman. I don't know what he's talking about. <laughs> Herman doesn't want to be named as the. I was just using my pathetic. Herman has a paintball company, Adventure Park. Adventure Park, and it started out. Whose idea was it? Whose idea? Mine. What was your idea, and how did it, it turn into a plan? Like now, you're working on all this architecture and design and building it out. Have you? Do you have it written out? No. <laughs> Okay, there's a saying, uh, if you don't have it written out, I can probably guess how much money you're making, and it's not as much money as you could be making. So, that's my, even the Harmon here works here, not to embarrass you, but write something out, even if it's just a little bit. Somebody else? Yes? I was writing a plan, and I was so stuck on a lingerie line, and when I started writing all the statistics and like getting the SWOT analysis for it, I had to write this bullet. I was like, this is okay. a garbage idea. So that's, I completely changed my focus to something else. And I had to be like, it's okay. I spent a lot of time researching and trying to do this, but it's right. not gonna work. So Yasmin found, that's the other good thing about a business plan. It forces you to have discipline to really look into 
whether it's worth devoting a large amount of years of your life to. So cool. So those are a few comments. If you have any, leave it below and uh, I'll talk to you soon.